So there's been two Grammy nominations in the classical category this year that have been the subject of controversy. The first is John Baptiste's Movement 11, and the second is Curtis Stewart's Album of Power. And the argument is they're not classical music. So, so what are they? Well, John Baptiste's Movement 11, if we look at it from a kind of for and against, arguments for it being classical music or it's kind of an etude. So an etude is a traditional thing where you have a simple idea, often a kind of plain technique that gets repeated over and over and over again. It starts off with a ton of arpeggios and then goes into more kind of melodic runs and then there's actually kind of a tune that emerges. There's a lot of harmony along the way the runs especially, and a lot of harmony, are very much from John Baptiste's jazz vocabulary, but I think the structure of it is quite classical. It doesn't stick to a lot of stereotypical jazz ideas. It doesn't do the kind of head improvisation head thing. Um, arguments against it being classical or really that it sounds a bit jazzy. So that's a bit of a tricky issue because Gershwin wrote a lot of things that sounded very jazzy and a lot of his music is absolutely accepted as classical music. Someone wouldn't go to a classical concert where Rhapsody and Blues playing and stand up and you know wave their finger and say that's not classical music. Um, classical music is a horrendous term that covers centuries of musical traditions that changed a lot. And yeah, I, I mean, for me, I think that's, I get no problem saying that John Baptiste's Movement 11 is classical music. It obeys a lot of conventions of classical music. So for Curtis Stewart's Of Power, I listened to the track Scrapple, um, which is a reference to Scrapple from the Apple, which is a song that was made famous by Charlie Parker. In the actual video, of the song Curtis Stewart's playing the violin and you can actually see a picture of Charlie Parker in the background so obviously he's trying to evoke that. At the same time, yeah, there's a lot of jazz inflection, but a lot of his playing is much more relevantly linked to 20th century string technique. So it has a lot of things that you wouldn't probably think of it as jazz, that yeah, <laughs> some of you might, you know, actually think don't sound particularly nice, but are very typical of a lot of string writing that happened, you know, in the past in what we would now call classical music or art music, um, another terrible term. The YouTube channel 12 Tone does a really, really good thing about kind of discrediting the term art music. I'll put a link to it below. And, and so we're left with these two pieces of music, which are kind of blurring lines, but it's important to understand that genres are created by blurring lines, and that's not a new thing. So when rock and roll was created with the fusion of white country and western and black rhythm and blues music, that wasn't the first time different musical cultures had blended and created something new. That happened in classical music all the time. So when Mozart was touring around in the late 18th century, he was going to these different countries and being hugely influenced by the music there. It's always happened. Um, Chopin was Polish, lived in France, brought a lot of Polish traditions with him, blended them with French piano music of the time and created something new. It's just, that's the way music works. Um, I, I have this terrible fear that if you looked at Curtis Stewart and John Baptiste and put them next to most classical musicians, there would be an obvious contrast that you would see. And I hate to think that's what's going on, but I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't see a good argument for not saying that they're classical just because they're jazz influenced. There's all kinds of jazz influenced classical music that's been accepted for, you know, coming up to a century. I think one of the things that we need to contend with is the whole idea of art music in a Western classical tradition 
It's white. It's a bunch of white guys. You know, we, we say it's dead Germans, but it's a bit broader than that. But it's pretty much white men, and Curtis Stewart and John Baptiste do not fit in to that neatly. And I think maybe rather than saying, oh no, this is a threat to classical music, surely we should be celebrating that. We've got some tremendously talented musicians who are trying to offer something new in the world of classical music. That's what classical music needs. It doesn't need protecting, it needs reinvigorating, and here's two guys doing it. So I say, well done, Curtis, and well done, John. <laughs>